tutor here on Wiseant. I tutor a number of topics in math, um, but today we're going to be looking at um, some linear algebra. So um, the question that was posted um, says here that we're given some um, linear operator t or linear linear uh, yeah linear transformation t uh, that goes from r squared to r squared. We're told that t of this vector 1, 2 equals this vector 1, 1, and t of 2, 0 equals the vector 2, negative 4. We're asked a couple things. We're asked to find a formula for t of some arbitrary vector x, y. We're asked to find a basis uh, for the kernel of t. And we're find, asked to find a basis for the range of t. And then we're also asked to uh, verify the dimension theorem, also known as the rank nullity theorem. So first thing we need to kind of um, do to approach this is understand what t is here. So t is a linear transformation. So the best way to think about this is that t represents some matrix multiplication here. So um, we're taking, uh, we're taking basically some, some matrix A, which we'll label here A, B, C, D. Now this is a two by two matrix because of course we're taking a, um, a, a column vector, basically a two by one matrix, and it results in another column vector, which is a two by one matrix. So that's what, um, that is the type of matrix that we're gonna be using for this type of linear transformation. So if we look at this transformation as matrix multiplication of a two by two matrix with some column vector, then we can create some uh, some equations from this. So say we, we're given that t of 1, 2, this vector 1, 2, that's really ugly, but that's right, um, equals 1, 1. So this is the same thing as saying this uh, matrix A, A, B, C, D, times 1, 2, this vector 1, 2, equals 1, 1. And from here, we can make a series of uh, or a couple of equations here. So just multiplying through using matrix multiplication, this gives a plus 2b equals 1. And then multiplying here, we get c plus 2d equals 1. So now we have two equations here, which is fantastic, but we do have four unknowns, a, b, c, d. So we need two more equations in order to solve this. Luckily, boom, we have some uh, another uh, an another uh, input output here. So in this case, t of uh, 2, 0 equals this uh, vector 2, negative 4. So we'll do the same thing where we do a, b, c, d. This is the same matrix. Multiplied by 2, 0 gives us 2, negative 4. We'll do the same thing. Multiplying through, we get 2a, b times 0, 0 equals 2. And this is 2c, a, d times 0, 0. So that's going to give us negative 4. Uh, great. So now we have four equations for unknowns. We could, if we wanted to put all this together, get a four by four matrix, um, you know, do the augmented matrix, do row, redu row reduce and all that kind of stuff like that to figure it out. However, in this case, um, it's pretty straightforward to do um, substitution and solve all of these. So first off, looking at A, very easy to see that A is equal to one. Here with C, uh, very easy to see that C is equal to negative two. All right, so now that we have these, we can go over here, uh, plug in a here, which is one. We subtract one from both sides. That means 2b equals zero, which means b must be equal to zero. And then lastly, we go over here to c. c is negative two. We add two to both sides. That means 2d equals three, which means that d equals three over two, which means now we have our matrix. So we have our matrix a, which equals one, b is zero, c is negative two, and d is three over two. Now you could, if you wanted to, I won't do it in the interest of time, verify that this is actually correct and, and you will see that it is. If you multiply um, this matrix by this vector uh, one, two, you're gonna get one, one and, and same thing with this one here. Great, so now that we have the matrix, we need to find a formula for this. So it's just simply a matter of uh, recognizing that t of x, y, is the same thing as saying a times x, y. Uh, and a, we have a here, which is 1, 0, negative 2, 3 over 2. And we multiply that by x, y using matrix multiplication. This is going to give us um, this vector. So we have x and then y times 0 is 0. So we have x at the top here. And then we have negative 2x plus three over two y, and you could switch these if you wanted to, but it's the same thing. So this here 
that's our formula right there. So uh, that's the first one checked. We got that. We got their formula. Now we need to find a basis for the kernel. So we need to find the kernel of of this transformation t. Um, and this is going to be all of the vectors um, that after the transformation. Uh, or all the vectors that map to the zero vector after the transformation. So basically, since we have our, um, our formula here, it's a matter of just setting this equal to zero, seeing for what values of uh, x and y does this get mapped to zero. So x must be equal to zero, right? So we, we understand that because x has, has to be zero. So if x must be zero, then here, if we look at this, that must mean that y also must be zero because when three, have, uh, when three over two y equals zero, then y must equal zero. And this means that the kernel of this transformation is this trivial vector here, which is the zero vector, right? Um, and that means that the dimension of the kernel of t is zero, right? Because it's just that zero vector, because it's just the trivial vector there. Um, now, and, and what and what we um, also see here from that is that this is a full rank. Uh, this is full rank here. So there are no vectors um, outside of the outside of the um, zero vector that get mapped onto the zero vector. So this is full rank, which means that the uh, the dimension of the range of t is two. And by doing this here, we we are actually addressing this here, um, this dimension theorem, this rank nullity theorem, because it's just saying that these two things added together is going to be the same dimension as the space itself, right? That it's in. So that's that's great. Now the basis for the kernel, we've already discussed that it's just that zero vector, so good. And the basis for the range of this transformation, um, since again this is full rank, we can just use the matrix itself, itself, this transformation matrix itself, to find the basis, since this is full rank. And the basis is right there. We have two vectors here, which are linearly independent. Um, so we can use that as the basis of the range of t. Um, I mean, you it's the easiest way to, to approach it, at least. And with that, all four things are done. Hope this helps. Mm -hmm.